Welcome back to lesson one on perfect squares. In this video, we'll look at finding square roots of fractions. So for a fraction, you should start by reducing the fraction if possible. Then you determine the square root of the numerator and square root of the denominator. If both are perfect squares, then the fraction is a perfect square. So an example of a fraction that's a perfect square would be nine over 16. Since nine is a perfect square, and 16 is as well. Now to find the square root of that, we just need to find the square root of the numerator and square root of the denominator. Now the square root of nine is three and square root of 16 is four. For example one, we have to determine which of the following are perfect squares and then determine the square root of those that are perfect squares. So for A, we have 81 over 25. Now both 81 and 25 are perfect squares. So we're able to now find the square root. Square root of 81 is nine, and the square root of 25 is five. Now for B, I have 15 over four. 15 is not a perfect square, even though four is, the both the numerator and the denominator need to be perfect squares. So I'm going to say that this is not a perfect square. I also want to take note that this fraction could not be reduced because that is always step one when we have fractions is you have to reduce the fraction first and this cannot be reduced. For C, one is a perfect square and 18 is not. So that makes this not a perfect square either. And for D, you may say that this is not a perfect square since two and 200 are not, but we can reduce this one. I can divide numerator and denominator by two. And doing that gives me one over 100. Now one is a perfect square and 100 is, so I'm able to find the square root now. Square root of one is one, and square root of 100 is 10. So always make sure you look to see if fractions can be reduced before you say it's not a perfect square. Example two, we have to determine the number whose square root is three over eight. So the square root of some number is three over eight. And to find that number, we can just square three over eight. So when we square something, it's the same as multiplying it by itself. And multiplying the numerators and then multiplying the denominators together gives me nine over 64. The same thing for B, I'll square one over nine I can multiply it by itself as we did in A, or you can square the numerator and square the denominator. One squared is one and nine squared is 81. And for this last example, we can use diagrams to help us determine if something is a perfect square. And the diagram can help us determine what the square root is. So for four over nine, we draw a square and then break it into nine equal sections. Then we shade for the blocks and shade them in the form of a square if possible. So I'll shade these four right here. So now the square root is going to be the dimensions of the square. So looking at the side lengths, here we shaded two of the three blocks. And down the side, once again, we shaded two of the three blocks. So the square root ends up being two over three. We'll do that again now for B. I'll draw a box and break it into 16 
equal sections. Here I only need to shade one block. So now, because I've shaded one of the four blocks up top and one of the four blocks down the side, that makes the square root equal to 1 over 4. Now if you're using diagrams, if you have something like 5 over 9, for example, I'm not able to shade five blocks that would make it to the shape of a square. There's four, and if I shade the fifth one here, say, I cannot break it into a square. So that makes this a non-perfect square then. So that's how we can use diagrams to help you determine if something's a perfect square and then what the square root is.